Just when Garen said there that you're the, his favourite doctor, I, you probably heard the story, but there's that wonderful story of what a fan said to you once. Oh yes, I was uh, early on in my doctorhood, um, and I, I I met this fan, and he was he was shaking. I mean, he really, oh my, oh, Doctor Who is the best thing in the world. It's wonderful. It was just such a delight. And he's, oh, and he happened to have a whole lot of books with him. And I go, please, could you sign my annuals? And, and here's, I've got the okay, postcards here and the, the VHS covers. Oh, please sign them all. Thank you very much. You are my fifth favourite Doctor. <laughs> Seven at the time. Yeah, there were seven. I mean, at least it wasn't the last. I mean, it was terrible. It was seven. Favorite number. Not quite top of the. the, the. Fantastic. But it was a wonderful instance. It was really. It wasn't in any way insulting me. No, this is you know, this is where I was. I was his fifth favorite. That's fine. Yeah, good. I accepted that. Yes, that's good. Did you ask who were the top four? No, no, no. I didn't go there. Right. right. <laughs> any other questions? We have we have some right. Okay, this gentleman here, then the one at the back, and then over here. Uh, this kind of follows on from the previous question, actually. Uh, big finish at the moment of bringing out uh, missing stories from Colin Baker's last season. With that uh, happening, uh, if your stories from the season you never got to do uh, were to become a viable project for Big Finish, would you be would you sort of consider doing that, or, or would you have reservations about it? Um, no, I mean, it's kind of, there is a little bit of chat going around at the moment. They're waiting to see how Colin's stories do, you know, the ones that they've just done, or the, the unfinished stories of Colin, and they're going to see how that goes down. And if it goes down quite well, um, I wouldn't be at all surprised if um, they start to talk, they're talking to Andrew Beach about what he's got in his mind and, and trying to get in touch with the, the writers that... Andrew, I can't remember on Beach, yeah. Yes, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, Andrew Carmel. Anyway, um, so uh, I, it would be interesting, really. It would be quite interesting because, you know, to see what would happen. I think it would be, from a personal point of view, it would be great to have some kind of closure, you know, as they say, because I was only going to be in the first half of the next season. And I'd just love to know what had been planned and what had. Uh, yeah. Apparently, Night Thoughts, I think it's Night Thoughts, the one with the rabbit on the cover, is that right? You're going to be turned into a rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> the, the Big Finish CD we did. Apparently that was one of the ideas that was uh, going to be, um, you know, but I don't know, I don't know whether that's... I mean, what I, the thing is, what do you think of that idea? Is that, do you like that idea? Because, I mean, you, you're the ones that... Um, it's up to you. It's up to you, because we've... We're going to do a direction of well, of course, the, the famous one was your doctor, which is, was turned into one of the probably the best stories of the new series, was Human Nature, um, and that was one of your novels. That was one of your doctor. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they yeah. did one in the they new series. It, they made it with David Tennant. Yeah, oh, it, was, right. it was very good. <laughs> <laughs> William just turned around and said, what did he say? I said, rascal. <laughs> there was a question at the back and then over here there was a question. Hello, Sylvester. I remember reading an interview um, years and years back that um, you used to go to drama school with Timothy Dalton. In 1987, you came Doctor Who, he became Bond. Now Timothy Dalton's back in Doctor Who. Uh, what are your memories of working with Timothy Dalton? Well, actually, we went to drama school. We did um, Antony and Cleopatra and the Taming of the Shrew, uh, two Shakespearean plays, uh, with Vanessa, who was uh, Timmy, uh, Timmy's girlfriend at the time, Vanessa Redgrave. And uh, the, so uh, uh, we were in the West End uh, at that time, and um, I was playing the, the principal comic part in The Taming of the Shrew, which, in fact, is the biggest part of the play, someone told me. More lines than anyone else. And um, the letters arrived at the stage door, and I think they got mixed up. I mean, I think that um, uh, <laughs> the one from Chubby Broccoli should have gone to me because I was a Scot. And, uh, you know, yes, um, you know, I. Uh, is it Chubby Broccoli? Or Chubby, Chubby Broccoli. But... <laughs> well, it was quite. Fat. It works, it works. 
a bit, a bit green around it, you know. Anyway, um, and I, I, and I, I think that, um, that, that there was a big mistake, you know. Timmy, Timmy, who definitely would have made a very good Doctor Who at the time, um, and uh, you know, yes, I mean, I could have taken over, you know, because James Bond is a Scot. I mean, this is what yeah. we forget. He's not Irish. He's not from the north of England, the one we got now. No, he's a Scot. It's written in the book. Jeez. That's right. That's yes. right. That's a fact. Right, okay, we have a question over here. Oh, hello, uh, Sophie, and it's nice to see you again. Uh, just a question to Sophie, uh, just expanded on the question I asked earlier, because Ace was brought back in the books, but I felt she came back as very fat, hard, and aggressive. And I didn't really like that. How would a few like to, to see you coming back. Oh, it's, a, it's a hard question. I mean, I I think it was an interesting departure for the character to go off and become this kind of, I don't know, Lara Croft type figure before Lara Croft was ever thought of. But I would like to have thought that Ace would have learnt... Lara Bungalow. The... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey. Scottish show. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought that I would have liked to have thought that the doctor would have taught her about her sort of emotions and her feelings and you know uh, so that that would have come in and I think that really um, I mean when I started watching the new series I thought that the character of Rose was um, I, I don't know whether um, Russell T Davis had a bit of an ace in his mind when he was writing her, but you know the whole thing about the council estate and the, the sort of the, the, the whole way she was. I think that 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 direction would have I would have preferred that the sort of feeling ace who was going to talk to a Dalek and you know feel sorry for them or you know some kind of um, emotional journey rather than picking up just on the chucking Nitro 9 around, you know. As an actress, it would have been a more interesting journey to have. Um, because I must admit that the stories like Curse of Fenric, like, like Ghost Light, like Greatest Show, like Survival, I enjoyed filming them more than, say, something in Battlefield, which was a great story, but it returned to the sort of younger race, if you like, where I was just uh, chucking Nitro 9 around, you know, wicked and all that. And that was fun to do, but it wasn't as kind of challenging acting-wise as doing those other stories. So yeah, I'd have liked to have seen her go off in a more sort of emotionally mature direction, I think. Cool. Any other questions? Yep, we've got a couple over here. So, uh, and well, there's William wants to ask a question, so we'll have William first and then we'll go to you, you guys. If, if the Seventh Doctor would come back like Time Crash, would the um, Seventh Doctor come back like Time Crash? And would um, Ace like to come back like Sarah Jane? <laughs> oh. Well, uh, yes, uh, I, I come back for any crack, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I, no, no, it's the crack is good. It's an Irish one. You good a dirty mind? <laughs> No, it's a, a, um, a, what's Time Crack? No, Time Crash was for the, the oh, crash. Uh, episode that Peter Davison did with David Taylor. Oh, right, all oh, right, yes, for it's a charity thing, yeah. yeah. No, no, I'd be, yes, I'd be delighted to come back and do stuff, yeah. Because yeah. um, you made a brief appearance in the Christmas special this year. Did I? Yes, yes, I did a little flashback of all the doctors and you yeah. were there, you know, so you were, you were there on Christmas Day. All oh, right. The Ace... I was, all, yes, I was, I was also um, uh, on, on, yes, I had a big television day that day because I was on Channel 4 in King Lear on Christmas Day. So that was the very comic part where I ended up getting hung. <laughs> <laughs> the a lot of critics thought I should have done that years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and what, uh, would you like your own spin-off show, The Ace Adventures? I mean that would be really good fun but um, I don't know, I feel like I've sort of, I've got, I, I'd like to, I'd certainly like to come back for an episode or two but I don't know whether I could sustain the, the whole, I don't know. I need to wait till the kids are a bit older, I think. Well, you know, Les can't go on forever. So, uh, so. <laughs> yeah. I like sailing close to the wind. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> Hi, uh, Sylvester and Sophie. Uh, one of my favorite stories from your time was the Happiness Patrol, but uh, some saw 
for example, the Candyman or Bertie Bassett as the show <laughs> not being taken or taking itself seriously. What were your thoughts when you learned that the enemy for this story was going to be Bertie Bassett or the Candyman? Well, I thought, how sweet. <laughs>